Or trigger finger is basically a disproportion between the volume of the tendon sheath and the content. And this disproportion basically prevents free gliding of the tendon beneath the annular pulley. The technique of percutaneous trigger finger release has already been described in the literature. And it has undergone uh, changes and many advents since its discovery. So basically using a, uh, a tenotome, a specially designed knife, or a hypodermic needle. The objective of our study was to evaluate the outcome of percutaneous trigger finger release technique using an 18 gauge needle. A prospective study was conducted in 80 consecutive trigger fingers in 67 patients. Preoperatively, the grading of the triggering was assessed by Quinnell's grading system, and pain was assessed preoperatively by using VASCOR. All the assessment was done by a single uh, senior resident, and postoperatively, to avoid the bias, the assessments were done by a different senior resident. We have followed up the patients for a time interval of one year at uh, timely intervals. The Quinnell gla classification for grading the trigger finger, uh, they have basically divided into four grades. The grade 0 is normal movement, grade 1 is uneven, grade 2 actively correctable, grade 3 is passively correctable, and grade 4 is a fixed deformity. So the inclusion criteria were patients with primary radiopathic trigger finger, patients who are not responding to conservative line of management for three months, and baseline FBS, PLBS within normal limits. Those patients with secondary trigger finger associated with diabetes, rheumatoid arthritis, or hypothyroidism, and triggering due to lesions in other pulleys were excluded. Uh, all the releases were done as an outpatient procedure in minor OT under strict asepsis. The skin was prepared using beta-dense scrub and sterilium. A single shot of IV antibiotic was given preoperatively. The pulley was marked both by palpation and a predefined surface marking. 2 ml of 0.75% plain ropivacaine was injected locally around the nodule. And after the uh, pain subsided, the finger was held in hyperextension. Hyperextension is basically very essential so that the flexure tendon sheet lies just below the skin and the digital neurovascular bundles are retracted laterally. The needle is then withdrawn slightly until it ceases to move with the flexion of the finger. The pulley is cut by moving the bevel of the needle from proximal to distal in line with the finger. The surgeon feels a grating sensation as the needle tip cuts through the transverse fibers of the A1 pulley. And loss of grating sensation indicates adequacy of the release. After that, patient is asked to actively flex and extend the finger. If the patient demonstrated a continued triggering, the needle is inserted more distally, and again the release is performed. A small adhesive strip bandage was placed on the puncture wound. Patients were asked to return to their activity as soon as the pain resolved. And adequate post-op analgesia were uh, ensured by using ropivacaine as an agent of choice for local. And SOS NSAIDs were prescribed. Physiotherapy rehabilitation was given to all the patients in the form of active finger movement and stretching for a period of two to three weeks. 67 patients included in the study. There were 41 females and 26 males. Majority of the subjects in our study were in the age group 40 to 50 years. And the most common digit which was involved in our study was thumb followed by ring finger. All the patients, they have shown a progressive decline in the quinal grading, and the mean VAS score has progressively declined. The VAS score at different time intervals, this has been shown in this chart, which has shown the mean VAS score, which was roughly around 7 to 8, has fallen down to, uh, has fallen between 1 and 2 at one year follow-up. So the take-home message is a technique of percutaneous releasing trigger finger using an 18 gauze needle. It is a simple procedure with easy learning curve. It has a high success rate with very few complications and negligible recurrence. The only drawback in her study was there was no control group for comparison, and all the patients, only patients with A1 trigger pulley, were included in the study. And here's a comparison of different techniques. There have been different papers on percutaneously releasing. So all the papers have shown satisfactory results in more than 90% of patients with minimal complications. Just the modality of the instrument which they have used has been different for all the techniques. Thank you.